everybody, I'm Sarah and I'm a recorder player. Welcome to the very first video in my new series, Recorder Basics. In this series, I'm going to be giving you the groundwork for getting into the recorder for the first time. And if you've already been playing for a while, this can really help to hone your basic technique. This video is called Your First Recorder Lesson because it's aimed at teaching you uh, how to basically get started in the right way. At the end of this video you will have learned a whole load of tips for good recorder technique and you will be able to play an entire song. And no, you don't need to read sheet music. And so you know what's coming, um, for reasons I outlined in last week's video, I'm not going to be doing a weekly lesson lesson, but I'm going to be covering all of these topics. Of course, if you have further questions, leave them in the comments. Let's get started. First of all, good choice in playing the recorder. The recorder is an amazing instrument with a huge history, loads of repertoire. It's versatile and sounds beautiful and can tackle any kind of music. So I'm really excited to start this with you. So what do we need to get started? Essential is your choice of recorder. I would start on the soprano or the alto or maybe the tenor. Um, you can choose and this video can apply to all of them. I think it's really helpful that you have your own method book. There is a whole video on this coming so don't worry. Yes you can find sheet music online for free but it doesn't really give you a structure and I find that having a method book not only gives you lots of information but it gives you a step-by-step -step structure to work with. In my opinion it's super helpful to have a music stand. Yes you can just put your book on the table but that's not so good for your posture and for my concentration I find it really helps to have a dedicated little corner in my house where I go, my stand is there and I can concentrate. You need a cleaning stick to clean and dry your recorder after practicing. Most uh, plastic recorders come with a stick like this or you can just use a pencil. Um, I take a sock because they're very absorbent and can be washed, put it over the end and then you can just dry your recorder like so, and there are all kind of practice aids that might be helpful for you. For example, a pencil for writing down notes, or a notebook to write them down in, or a metronome to help you with rhythm. You can also find just this just uh, on Google or in the App Store for free. But for today's lesson, all you need is a recorder. Okay, we're gonna begin by standing or sitting up nice and straight. Just make sure that your shoulders, your neck, your back are all relaxed you're breathing comfortably and when you take your recorder your left hand is at the top yes this is necessary your shoulders aren't hunched up your elbows aren't up or clamped down everything is kind of nice and relaxed like so <coughs> playing the recorder is made up of three elements that is your air your fingers and your tongue. So first we're gonna get into your air. I want you to breathe in with me and all the air is gonna be going down into your belly, not up into your shoulders. And then we're gonna blow it out in one steady stream as if you're blowing up a balloon. Ready? Like with everything in this video, feel free to pause and practice this as often as you need. So we're going to try that breath in once more and then out through the instrument. Don't worry about your hands for now. See how long you can blow for getting a nice, relaxed, steady stream that's not too wobbly. Let's get some fingers in there. Okay, I want you to take your left hand and make a kind of okay sign. And then we're gonna apply this to the recorder. So covering the thumb hole at the back and the first finger. Let's hear how that sounds. When you've got this, I'm gonna be a bit ambitious. We're gonna put two more fingers down. Look at my hand position, nice and relaxed. 
What is happening with my right hand while I'm doing this? Well, I'm supporting the recorder. My thumb is about between these next two open fingers. So it's about here. Um, let's be even more ambitious and put two more fingers down. Then we have the E. <laughs> Here's a tip, if your recorder is squeaking that means one of your fingers is leaking. Don't try and press your fingers into the recorder because that's just going to make tension. Instead I would work from the top Okay, what I want to do is go back to the G, that's with three fingers, and we're going to make those fingers a little bit more flexible by wiggling them. Again, just on a steady airstream, your air is always stable and flowing while we're doing this. You don't have to do it exactly with me, just get your fingers a little bit flexible. And we're gonna go a step more difficult. We're gonna move the first two fingers of your right hand together. With every step in this video, please feel free to pause it and practice it for as long as you need. It's not meant to come like this, but I'm just giving you tips that you can work on in your own time. Okay, our fingers are moving a bit and our air is flowing nicely. We're gonna bring in the tongue and this is essential for recorder playing. You can't speak without using your tongue and you also can't play the recorder without your tongue. It gives shape to the notes. Basically, we begin every note with the tongue. So you're not stopping and starting your breath, like but you're blowing a steady stream and your tongue is going Okay, let's try this without the instrument. We're gonna to be tonguing on the gummy ridge behind your teeth not on your teeth and I'm going to use the syllable D so we're going to say do 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 of course it's also important that the air is flowing otherwise we're not going to get a sound so we're going to try and if you're confident with this we're going to bring the instrument in Let's try three G's after one another. This is also going to be the beginning of the song we're learning. Don't worry if in the beginning your tongue stroke feels clumsy or awkward or way too strong. Your tongue is a muscle and you just have to learn how to use it in this new way. Be careful you're not using your throat and going <laughs> because this can cause injury. A couple of principles with the fingers. The fingers and the tongue should move at the same time. If you move your fingers in between notes, like then you are creating a lot of extra work for yourself. And you're gonna find out it's easier to move one finger at once than many. If you have to move multiple fingers at the same time, which we do in this piece, ensure that they are working together. At this point, it's a really good time to get to know your instrument just by playing and playing, not worrying about notes written on a page, but blowing, putting your fingers down, playing with the tongue and listening to yourself. This time of exploration is so important for just getting to know your instrument and enjoying it. And I'm sure there are a million pieces that you can figure out by ear. Okay, we're gonna get more into the fingers and we're gonna put together our song. The notes that I'm gonna be using are B, A, G, F sharp, E, and D. 
Yes, I'm playing on a soprano recorder. Um, you can also use the same fingerings on an alto, though the notes will sound different. And I'm using a Baroque system. The piece we're going to put together is Ocle de la Lune, a French folk song, and it sounds like this. G, 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 we've already been practicing. We're gonna add an A after that and I want you to concentrate that your tongue and your finger lifting up lightly from the recorder are happening at the same time. And after this, we're gonna add a longer B. And then we're going to add an A and that is going to happen by your finger just falling onto the instrument. The next movement is a bit trickier because it's two fingers working together. They want to lift off from the instrument exactly at the same time, otherwise we get Let's practice that G, B a little bit. We're going to play our G, B, and then let the fingers fall back down again with A, A, G. Ready? Let's try all of that together. I'll put the notes here. folk song this whole thing repeats twice. Take as much time you need to practice this. If you're feeling confident we're going to go into the third line which is a bit trickier. It sounds like this. So that first bit the Okay, four times A, try that out. Then we've got three fingers moving together, falling to E, E. If you hear this, your fingers aren't moving at the same time. And if you hear this, then one of your fingers is leaking. And the last part is A, G, F sharp, E. D. The tricky part is those two fingers swapping with the F sharp. They should be alternating at the exact same time so we don't hear any blips. Practice it along with me. You have now learnt the entirety of that song. The first line comes twice, then we hear then it goes back to the beginning. <laughs> Let's try it all together. One, two, three, four. played along with me fantastic with these six notes 
you can already play a lot of songs so I would really spend some time with your instrument playing, experimenting, seeing if you can make up your own things but please remember to keep in mind all of these technical tips that I've given you. It's better to start off slowly and take the time to really consolidate them than to try and play fast <laughs> virtuosic things and end up getting into bad habits. So that was it. I hope you have enjoyed your first recorder lesson with me. I'm excited to take you through a lot of different recorder basics over the coming weeks. As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here in the corner. If you'd like to support the channel team recorder, you can do that by heading over to my Patreon page. And up here is a link to a play along video I did, which hopefully soon you'll be able to play along with me. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.